Anaerobic digestion is probably the only waste energy technology that a community could look at getting involved in. And if you're interested in this, it's probably because you're an agricultural community with a large number of dairy farms or pig farms in the area. Anaerobic digestion as a form of waste disposal only is not new and can work at remarkably small scale. The digester is basically a large tank that breaks down organic materials in an oxygen-free environment. This produces a biogas and a liquid called the digestate that can be used as a fertilizer. If you want to generate significant amounts of energy as well as merely digesting the waste to create fertilizer, then you'll need to add some organic materials to the slurry that have not already been digested, such as grass silage or waste from harvesting cereal crops. The economics of setting up anaerobic digesters for energy production have to date not been very favorable in the UK. And as a result, there are very few anaerobic digesters operating at scale at present. The government's introduction of the feeding tariff has helped this slightly, so larger dairy farms may now find this an attractive investment, down to as low as 350 kilowatt capacity systems. But the best economics are still to be found at a scale that requires more slurry and silage than even the largest farms can produce. As a result, it's probably better to consider anaerobic digestion as a cooperative endeavour to get the best returns. Really attractive economics can be achieved with plants of about one to one and a half megawatts capacity and above. To keep a one megawatt anaerobic digester plant going, you need about 30,000 tonnes of organic material each year. Some of this has got to be slurry because it's the bacteria in the slurry that makes the process work, but much of the energy has already been extracted from slurry by the cows who ate it. So you need to add other materials to get the best energy outputs. Grass silage and cereal wastes are great for this, as are fats and oils. But as with people, not too much fat, please. You could work on about a third each of slurry, grass and cereal silage and other wastes, such as chicken farm waste and waste from cheese processing. While you could actually get away with less slurry, these sorts of quantities would optimize the environmental and economic benefits to your farming community. You would be helping to reduce the amount of methane, a powerful greenhouse gas, emitted from the slurry. At the same time, you will be creating a valuable soil improver and helping to deal with the excessive costs of slurry storage. Given that the average cow produces over 17 tonnes of slurry per year, you would therefore need a group of farms who between them had about 530 head of cattle to run a one megawatt plant, as well as enough land to produce the silage. Such a plant would operate almost all the time, providing a regular supply of enough electricity for about 1,500 homes, which you would feed into the grid. It would also generate significant waste heat, which could be used on site or distributed via a district heating network. Thinking through how to use this waste heat will be an important part of your plan and could help you secure finance as there may be businesses with large heat demands that would be willing to invest in your plant in return for significantly reduced heat costs. Horticultural nurseries or bakeries, for example. You will obviously need planning permission for the plant itself. You'll need to provide the local authority with information not only on the structure and design of the plant, but also on the potential nuisance issues, in particular, smell and increased transport. You will need to show the measures that you intend to put in place to mitigate them. They'll probably also require an environmental statement to assess impacts on local ecosystems. Because of the transport, it's very likely that you'll also need to discuss your plans in some detail with the highways department. Anaerobic digesters are not common in the UK, and so few planning authorities have experience of dealing with them. Be prepared to deal with significant misunderstanding, some of which may come from the local community as well. Confusion about digestion versus incineration is a common problem. You'll also need various permits from the Environment Agency to operate the plant itself and to cover the use of the biogas and the digestate. Make sure you enter into discussions with them early on as this can be quite time consuming. The procedure for gaining permits from the Environment Agency can seem completely impenetrable, but it's really a question of ensuring that they have properly logged all waste streams and that watercourses and sensitive environments have not been put at risk by the operation of the plant. 
Don't be put off by the apparent complexity. It's actually quite a standardized procedure. After the capital installation costs, the main cost to the farmers involved will be the transport of slurry to the digester and the collection of their proportion of the digestate at the end of this process. For this reason, transport distances should be minimized, five miles or less if possible. The capital costs themselves will vary. Where possible, the tanks are built partially or completely below ground in order to minimize visual impact and stabilize temperatures as much as possible. The ground type will determine the costs of excavating and where the water table is very high, the tanks may have to be above ground and well insulated, which can be more costly. A one megawatt plant would probably cost in the region of three to four million pounds to develop and install. There are currently no UK manufacturers of anaerobic digester plants, but the technology is well proven on the continent, particularly in Germany, and it is possible to get consultancy support from abroad. While you need to take into account the capital costs of the equipment and costs of getting planning permission, you need to offset against that the various other expenses that you will no longer have to pay as a result of using anaerobic digestion for energy production. You should calculate such costs as accurately as possible because these avoided costs form a significant part of the overall economics of the system. Firstly, the digestate can be used as a fertilizer which reduces the cost of buying synthetic fertilizer. Secondly, producing electricity through anaerobic digestion will create waste heat. You can utilize this to heat barns and other farm buildings or even supply heat to neighboring properties. Finally, the costs of disposing of or storing slurry can be very high. If your farm is in a nitrate vulnerable zone, then you are not allowed to spread slurry on the land all winter. Providing 26 weeks of slurry storage on such farms can be very expensive. All of these costs could be significantly reduced through the use of anaerobic digestion for energy production. In addition to these avoided costs, your cooperative will receive income payments from selling electricity to the grid, additional payments from the Renewable Obligation Certificates or feed-in tariff, and potentially some income from selling metered heat to neighbouring properties. Annual operating income for a one megawatt plant, assuming that the majority of the heat is usefully employed, could be in the region of 800,000 to 1 million pounds. There are so few plants like this in operation in the UK that there is little precedent to go on here. However, it's generally felt that the whole process, from the initial meetings to discuss setting up the project, through to gaining planning permission, and on to completing the installation, is likely to take in excess of two years. The process produces about 10% biogas and about 90% digestate. So, if you put in 10,000 tons of slurry, you will get 9,000 tons of digestate back. What you have though, is a much more useful product than slurry. Digestate is much less smelly than slurry and is less solid. This means it's less of a nuisance and is absorbed by the land quicker, which reduces the time that you can't graze cattle on those fields. In addition, because of the temperatures reached in the tank, weeds and diseases such as bovine tuberculosis are killed off so it can considerably improve farm hygiene. There are still some regulations to be applied though. The Environment Agency issues permits for the use of digestate as a fertilizer to be spread on land. As with all agency permits, speak to them early and make sure you differentiate between digestate that you intend to spread on your own land and that which you might sell to others, as the permit regime is not necessarily the same. As you can see, there are many factors to consider and a number of steps you'll need to take in the initial investigation. I hope this information has been useful. Thank you for watching.